Thank you, Gail. Friends, we arise for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, highest and, and peace to God's, God's people on earth. earth. Lord God, heavenly God, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out our, your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading today is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. A reading from Isaiah. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong people will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with a shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shout that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all the faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. <coughs> it will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited, let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Lord, Lord, to whom, to whom shall, shall we, we go? go? You, you have, have the, the words, words of eternal, eternal life. life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew in the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest of them seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready. But those... <coughs> Excuse me. But those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see his guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, 
Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, we give you thanks for your invitation to know your Son, Jesus Christ, and to one day sit down with him at table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray that you will help us to trust in him each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, on one of the last days of Jesus' life, he tells a parable as he teaches in the temple. This parable is of a king, a wedding banquet for his son, and the invitation that is sent out. It's a story of the wonderful, gracious invitation and blessing of God. And it is also a story of accountability before God. So a king has a son who is getting married and he sends out the invitations to this wonderful gala wedding banquet that is about to begin. And we could imagine that if he's a king, he's sending out invitations to nobility, to uh, religious leaders, to military leaders, to ambassadors from foreign nations and so forth. This elite of the kingdom, the leadership of the kingdom. The servants go out to say it's time to come. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody responds. We're not told why yet. Maybe they don't like his son. And of course if we think about Israel at the time, what were they about to do? They were about to crucify the Lord. They didn't like his son. So the king sends out the servants again after he, they have reported back to him. <clears throat> and this time he does what he should have done in the first place probably. He reminded them what a good meal it was going to be. I've got the oxen and the fatted calf and I've got wine when Beth read the story from Isaiah. The story from Isaiah speaks of this banquet on the day of the Lord, on the day when what we would call the day of judgment or the day of the Lord when God sets all things right and he lifts up Israel again as a nation, as a beacon to other peoples. <clears throat> or we would think of the coming of Christ in his glory in the last days and he sets out a banquet that the people could not imagine. Maybe some of the royalty, but not the people, would have eaten like that. They would have had just plain, ordinary food, not rich stuff dripping with marrow and fat so that when you eat it, you know, it gets all down your clothes. <laughs> and wine that is actually strained clear. Have any of you had wine with dregs in the bottom of it? and then you drink the dregs or maybe your coffee grounds got all messed up and you drink the coffee grounds so he describes this wonderful feast they still don't come you know what I think the problem was he didn't tell them that there was going to be lutefisk and corv <laughs> and especially deviled eggs and rainbow jello. <laughs> if he had told them that, because the scripture tells us in one of the words in Greek that says they made light of it, it actually says they just didn't care. They just didn't 
care about the blessing and the mercy, the grace, the invitation of God to be in this relationship with him of grace through his son and to celebrate it at this feast. They just didn't care. They had other things that they thought more important, other things that they trusted greater than God, greater than Christ, and so one of them, you know, went back to his farming, another went to his business, and some of them actually were so irritated at the invitation that they killed the servants. But this God of blessing is also a God of accountability. There is accountability before God. And when they reject him, and when they kill his people, then we hear judgment is rendered upon them. Well, the food is still there, the feast is still set, the tables are still bountiful with food and with wine. And so the king says, go out, just find everybody, all these people in the pew right here, find them, they're perfect for the feast. And so they go out to the crossroads, they find whoever they can and they bring them back to the banquet hall and the banquet hall is full. And it's not only full, it's full of good people and bad people. At the door, the doorkeeper didn't say, okay, well give me your list of good deeds or give me the witness of your neighbor if you are a responsible and a decent person or not. They just were invited. And in accepting the invitation, in trusting the invitation of the King and of His Son, of Christ, they were cleansed. Besides which, St. Paul tells us, all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Which one of us can stand before God on our own merits and say, God, I am righteous without the righteousness of your son. Well, apparently one guy tried. Because at the end, after this happy ending, everybody's enjoying the banquet. They've been invited in. They are in this beautiful relationship of grace with the Father and with the Son. And they're filled with the spirit of joy. There's this one guy. And he does not have on a robe. And the king says, how did you get in here without a robe? So apparently the king, as they, all these other people came in, he gave them a wedding robe to put on. And they put it on willingly and joyfully to be a part of the banquet of the sun. And if we want to think of what that robe is, think of your baptism. It's what this robe represents that I wear. Your robe, Beth, represents our baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus, the forgiveness of sin and the promise of life, and that that is the heart of our life and this is the joy of our life. Even without all of the food in the banquet, that by itself, no matter what comes in life, is enough and it is filled with joy the strength and the beauty of belonging to Jesus. Not by our merits, but by His righteousness that we put on like a robe. But this one man, no, I won't have it. He drops, perhaps, the robe that was offered him to the ground. And when the king sees him, what he would have liked to say was, Lord, here I am. I am righteous. I don't need your son. I don't need crutches. All I need is myself. I am who I am and I am worthy. But when the king asked him, friend, how did you get in here without a robe? Speechless. Speechless. What can he say before the judgment of God? 
The God of blessing is also a God of accountability and he holds this man accountable in that moment and that man has nothing to say in his defense and he knows it. None of us would have if we stood in his place. And so he is judged. But you and I and anyone who would like to come to the banquet of our Lord and one day we will have that banquet in the presence of the Lord right here at this table again in the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You and I remember that the God of accountability has accounted us righteous, justified, that we have a place at the banquet not because of our righteousness but because of the righteousness of Christ which we have put on and we wear. It is a garment that we wear every moment of our life. It is upon us the grace, the invitation, the mercy, the love of Christ. Amen. of
Friends, we arise and with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated, restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in mind, body, or spirit. We pray this day for Lucy, Oakley, Hillary, Randy, Cecilia, Tom, Holga, Lily, and those we name aloud or in our hearts before you. Andy and Logan. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Listen as we call upon you, O God, and enfold your loving arms for all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oops. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our and Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you.
and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to And give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.